morning, Impact Church, and welcome to another Sunday service. We just want to invite the Holy Spirit into this place as we worship Him today. Let's sing There's Nothing Worth More.
going to show up in your situation, sing it out. Say, Holy Spirit.
as we continue to worship you, God, now through the message, through the offering, through the announcements, all of it, God, let your spirit still be here, God. And let's be a fellowship with you today. In Jesus' name, amen. Joette, thank you so much for that leading us in that time of worship, man. I always forget to unmute when I'm doing this. So um, I was, I was, what I was saying was, he got me thinking. He said, put your own words into that. Pray and praise the Lord any, with whatever happened on, on this week for you. And you know what? If you had the greatest week, praise the Lord because he blessed you and had a great week. If you had the worst week of your life, praise the Lord because you know what? You're here with us today. It's Sunday and you're, you're worshiping with us. You're here for service. If it was just a weird, crazy week, Praise the Lord, because those are good. They stretch us. They make us better as people. So just, I want to stop and just praise them. Father God, we thank you. We love you. We worship you. It's amazing what you do in our lives, Father God, even when we can't recognize what's happening and we don't understand what's happening, Lord. And just how faithful you are, how good you are, how you sent your son to save us from ourselves, how you gave us the gift of the Holy Spirit to live in us and to guide us and to lead us, Father God. We just thank you for today that we get one more day in your house to praise you and give you all the praise and glory and honor. Let you, hallelujah, Father God, we just love you in Jesus' name, amen. Man, good morning, guys. I'm a little jacked up this morning. That was, uh, I, those two songs I, I really enjoy. I love worship. I love singing and dancing and stuff like that to worship music. And so thank you, Joette, for, for getting, putting us in that presence and in, in that mindset of just praising our Lord. And another way we praise our Lord is through tithes and offerings. We truly believe here at, at Impact that tithes and offerings are stretched. They, they're from God, and you have a couple different ways to give through envelopes. You can mail in at P.O. Box 155, Maywood, Illinois, 60153. You can also donate online at impactchurch-maywood.org. Uh, you can call myself, uh, and I, we pick up checks. It's funny because when we're out in Maywood, uh, a lot of times people call and say, hey, we have a donation. So how, whatever the Lord puts on your heart, and, and like you said, there's a scripture that says, for if the willingness is there, the gift is acceptable according to what one has, not according to what one does not have. Did you catch that? The willingness of your gift, gift is acceptable to what you have. So whatever the Lord puts on your heart right now, I, I, I just want to bless. Father God, we lift these tithes, we lift these offerings to you, Lord. Put on our hearts today, what you want us to give, that you know, whatever amount it is, it's acceptable, Father God, because it comes from our heart. It doesn't come out of obligation. It comes out of a heart that we want to give because you gave us the greatest gift of salvation through your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. So, Lord, thank you. Hey, guys, we've got a couple announcements I just want to go through with you guys. I'm going to be doing them today really quick because we got some cool uh, announcements to go through. So welcome. If you're a first time guest here today, uh, you can't fill out a connection card, but in the comment section, you can say, hey, I'm a first time guest. We have a, a gift we want to send you. So uh, we'd love having you follow us on Facebook, YouTube, uh, and Instagram. Please follow us on YouTube. Our YouTube is getting bigger. Uh, so we're looking to, you know, go over 100 people. So please find us on Facebook. Uh, like I said, Instagram, Facebook. Share this message with somebody. Here's a big announcement, guys. You guys ready? Next week, Valentine's Day, we're regathering again. We're allowed up to 25 people, to 30 people in a service now. So we're going to reopen the doors next Sunday. Surface will still be held online, but it'll also be in person uh, with, you know, COVID restrictions and stuff like that. And another big announcement is not, I'm, the kids are back next week. So don't forget to bring your children. We can have, uh, we, we can have 25 and 25. So we're, the, the building's big enough for us to split. So we are allowed to have people in the building and I'm so excited for that. So 
That's next Sunday, and we'll be starting a new series. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, today is Super Bowl Sunday, right? I love football. I love watching football. And uh, we have a little contest out there today. So whoever, pick a team and tell us how many points they're going to win by. So if Kate, if you think Kansas City's going to win and you think they're going to win by 10 points, post that in the comments. And if you win, uh, there's a gift card to, to the winner who's closest to to the score, whoever wins. So if you think it's the Buccaneers by 12, put Buccaneers by 12. But you also have to take a picture of yourself and send it to me, showing me that you're wearing your team spirit. Whatever team it is, it could be the Impact Sweater, whatever team that you love or like or whatever, um, take a picture of that and post that and let us know who's going to win in the score because there's a $25 gift card for you. Um, February 20th is our food distribution. So if you want to donate food, please get a hold of us. Get a hold of Proviso, Best of Proviso Township if you want. Follow them on Facebook. It's at Gog's Heritage. We do need volunteers for this. So we are looking for new partners to partner with us to to, to donate food or, or, or um, services, meaning come and volunteer and stuff like that. So, man, you guys, faithful giving has meant so much in the last year. We have fed over 10,000 people probably, all right, um, in the last year because of your donations, because of your support. So we, we, I love it. I pray about it. So thank you so much for, for being faithful. With that said, we do have a new series coming up next week. Watch this cool short little video. Guys, I'm excited about this series. You know, these these couple these couple months are like the darkest because it's snow and it's the weather, all these things. Plus, we've been cooped up with the coronavirus, right, and quarantine. And this series is about bringing light in these dark monks, bringing hope in these dark monks. And I'm just excited that uh, the series and what it's going to bring to us how to get out of the light, I mean, out of the dark monks, into the light, and be able to capture a, a new hope in these next couple months, <clears throat> bringing us into spring. So today, our, our service is about, our message is on uh, created for community, uh, a click versus tribal mindset. And let me explain. Like last week, we talked about, right, um, how how we were created for this community and how we were how we need community of people around us for mental health reasons for spiritual health for emotional health you know uh next week i gotta here's another huge announcement next week our impact class food for your soul gets to start i talked to vina nelson yesterday she said we can we can start using the the go big accounting uh, building again. So February 18th, I wasn't able to change the date and time on this because I just talked to her, but February 18th, write this on your calendar, uh, at six o'clock, February 18th, Thursday night, we will be starting this class in person and on zoom 
So please, if you are want to register, let us know because uh, in person seating is limited. Okay, on Zoom we can have as many people as we want. But in, in, in person, it is limited, so please let us know. If you put in the comments, text me, message us. Let us know that you are coming um, so we, we can accommodate everybody, okay? But Vi, thank you so much for leading the first class. The first class is going to be about healthy eating, keeping our bodies, uh, our temples uh, healthy, okay? Because it, it has everything to do with your mental health, your spiritual health. If you feel good and you're eating well, you have more energy, just all kinds of benefits. And I'm excited with Vi, who is a certified um, health coach, is going to be leading this class. So uh, I was very excited. So, and, and, and it, this is this is part of the community. This is what we're doing. We want to give you tools and resources to, to empower you, to impact your life, to get to, to build community with each other. So join us for that. And, you know, we've been craving community since the beginning of time. You know, Jesus needed it. We saw last week he needed it. It helped him with his health and, and the community that, that, you know, it brings to people by having a healthy uh, people around us that we can, um, you know, communities that just that important because of all the different benefits it brings us having good people around us. So, um, so I like you said, there's two types of communities that we're going to talk about today. And like you said, cl cl uh, click versus tribe. All right. And, and the first one I want to talk about is uh, the click. We click. The definition of a click is a small and exclusive group. It's kind of this small thinking. Us for no more, right? Um, I help. You know, I help out on on Thursdays. I don't know if you guys know, but on Thursdays I take Abby to preschool and at eleven o'clock, and we help out with the recess. And I, I mean, these are four year olds, right? But they were so clickish. It's so funny. It got me thinking. Like these two girls play with each other. These four girls play with each other. The boys play with each other. It's so clickish. And 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 the the bad thing about be having a click is, like I said, it's four. It's these small exclusive groups that at times they're good to have because they could be your four closest friends or something like that. But the big picture of things is just a tribal mindset because. Um, you know, in a, in a cliquish group, there's no, no, no room to really grow at times. And that's the problem. They're exclusive. You know, that, that mindset of four, no more. If you don't have, you know, think about it. If you guys in a click, if they, you don't have the same thoughts as the people in it, that they don't want you a part of it. If you don't have the same political views or if you have different social status or economic, econ economic status you know you you have different cultural backgrounds we, the, you know that thought of we don't have room for you that that's exclusive that is not who god is god is not exclusive he 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 said all nations are going to hear about him that every knee will bow it's not just one person it's the worldwide it's universal wide god is the universe right and and, and this clickish mindset can can trap us and you know we see a we're seeing a lot of that though lately right you know but do you really think god intended us to live that way see in little clicks that that makes people feel unwanted it makes them feel unappreciated it makes them feel unloved and god i truly don't believe had that mindset when he built the earth he told adam and eve in the garden to procreate to to watch over the animals to to you know build and and watch over the earth that he gave us and he they couldn't do it with just adam and eve right so and 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 here's the thing this thought of click is so unbiblical because in galatians 3 28 it says there is no longer jew or gentile slave or free male and female for you are all one in christ Jesus, amen. We are all one in Christ Jesus. If we call ourselves believers and Christians, then we have to have, we have to view one another as Christ does. And that is we are called, called to be one. We're called to be one family, one 
tribe in Christ, one un unified church, right? And and this brings, you know, it's not one and done. It's it's a, it's an it's a tribal concept, and, and that's my the second type of community. The second type is a tribe. And the definition of a tribe is a social division of people. It's a group, but it's not an exclusive group, right? In fact, it's an encouraging, it's, it, 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 in a tribe, you actually want to grow, right? And I like this definition. A, a tribe is a group of friends that become family. And that's truly what we believe at Impact. We want you to feel like family. We want you to feel welcomed, right? Think of the 12 tribes of Israel. It wasn't one tribe of Israel. It was 12 of them. Why? Because they were stronger. They were better. They, but, you know, they were all separate identities, but they were all one Tri one big tribe in the end of it, you know, and you see a group of friends uh, Tribe is a group of friends that become family and like you said if, if I, I That's what impact actually stands for, you know impact stands for involve many people and create teamwork is a tribal mindset that we are better together than separate from each other, right? This is what Christians are called to be. We are called to be family. But it's still there's still this question out there, like how do I build this community? What should it look like? And and I want to talk about this. Um, and I want to talk it from First Samuel chapter fourteen. We're gonna pick up in First Samuel chapter fourteen. So if you got a Bible, awesome, you can go ahead and open it. <clears throat> um, let me kind of give you a little context of what's happening. The Israelites are about to fight the Pal the Philistines again. Saul takes his army up there, but there's a ton of Philistines, and they were they were beating them, and and, and the Philistines um, just you know they they were always at war with them. But Saul, what happens is they the the Israelites they're afraid now. People are deserting. They're getting. They're they're leaving the army. Saul goes up there with like third three thousand, I think it was, in this army to go fight the Philistines. But you know, um, they were surrounded on all sides. It was scary. Samuel was supposed to come and bless them and and give them a a blessing before they went into battle. And Saul got impatient because Saul you know, was losing the Holy Spirit in his life and he wanted to do things his way. And so instead of waiting for Sa Samuel to bless him, he he blesses the Israelites themselves. And that wasn't supposed to happen. And Saul, Samuel came and said, man, what are you doing? You're not, you know, I was supposed to bless this and, and you took it upon yourself. And he was just being impatient and he took things in his own hands and the army was just terrified. And they started and they left and Saul was only left with 600 men at this time instead of thousands. And what we're, we're going to pick up is his son, Jonathan. So they're sitting in his valley and his son, Jonathan, sees the Philistines up in this in this hill and, and, and mountain. And he's going to go fight them and he's going to go see what's going on. And that's where we're going to pick up today in verse one. It says one day, Jonathan said to his armor bearer. Come, let's go over to where the Philistines have their outpost. But Jonathan did not tell his father what he was doing. Jonathan, think about this. Jonathan knew that that if, that even though everyone um, seemed to give up, Jonathan, right here at this point, he knew that God still had a plan for him. He knew that God had a plan for the Philistine, or for the Israelites, you know, and, and God still has a plan for you to follow. And that's just a sermon for somebody right there that God has a plan still for you, even though you might be in dark times and troubles and it looks like the, you're surrounded on all sides by the enemy. Man, that's not God's plan for you, okay? It's just a time being. So remember that God still has a plan because this is what uh, Jonathan is believing that God has a plan for him. And we learned that in verse 6. It says, let's go across to the outpost of those pagans. Jonathan said to his armor bearer, perhaps the Lord will help us. For nothing can hinder the Lord. He can win a battle whether he has many warriors or only a few. Right? And he goes on to say in verse 7, do what you think this is the armor bearer. Do what you think is best. I'm with you completely. Whatever you decide, man, 
there's just a ton of stuff to unpack right here. And it says perhaps. Jonathan says perhaps. He didn't have total faith at this point. He had faith that God could do whatever he wants. And he said, perhaps if we go up there, maybe he'll help us. And let and, and basically he's saying, let's see if if this is God's will. And that's what he's saying. He tells his armor bearer, if if God is gonna be with us. We're going to test it, kind of. And if the Philistines yell down to us, that means, and tell us to come up, that means God's with us and we're going to beat these guys. And, and and the armor bearer is just so sure whatever Jonathan's going to do is going to be right. So, Jonathan, see, Jonathan wasn't sure, and, but he wasn't willing to just sit around like his, his father Saul, Saul and do nothing about it. He Instead, he put something into action and he he goes to the enemy. He faces his fear. He faces what was in front of him. And, and do you see what he needs? He needs community to come beside him. He needs his armor bearer. This armor bearer, the, I don't know if you know the job of an armor bearer, but that's the person that carries his stuff. He carries his, his weapons. He carries his bag. Um, and the reason being, so... John, when Jonathan's fighting, he's not tired because he's carrying all this stuff. So the armor bearer is there to support him, to help him. And but what we see by by the response in in the armor bearer is that this interaction was more than just a relationship and an occupation. The armor bearer says, "I'm with you completely, whatever you decide." See, in Hebrews, that verse means my heart will follow your heart. And that's what the armor bearer basically is telling him. That we, and that's who we need in our lives. We need armor bearers in our community. And, 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 and what an armor bearer is, is his whole heart will follow your heart, right? This is, a, this is the first what we need to start with, armor bearers. These are friends when we're going through a battle, says, I'm ready to fight beside you. I'm ready to fight beside you. What armor bearers do you have in your tribe right now? Is it your spouse? Is it your husband? Is it your wife? Is it a best friend? Is it an uncle, a child, a grandparent? Is it a, a brother or sister? See, this, these are the people that won't run when the battle begins. This is an, an armor bearer that will hold up your arms and fight with you like it, they, they did with Moses, right? And this, this is the person that won't run, but they have your back. If, if we continue on reading, it says, come on, climb right behind me because they just got confirmation that God was with them. And it says, Jonathan said to his armor bearer, for, check out what he says for the lord will help us defeat them right a couple passages up before said perhaps now they got confirmation and now they have confidence because they know the lord's going to follow them and that's what the lord's going to do for you he's going to he's going to fight and defeat people and your problems for you you just need to believe and have faith and they say so they climbed up using both hands and feet and the philistines fell before jonathan and his armor bearer killed those who came behind them man see they see what happens they fight back to back they fight with each other who has your back right now in a battle who has your back is it a lifelong friend yeah is it a lifelong friend that you had your armor bearer and you know what those are great to have lifelong friends i just met with one of my lifelong friends i've known this guy since i was in diapers man and yesterday, where I'm helping plan his wedding, and and we got to meet his fiance for the first time yesterday, it was like sitting with my family. How we just had a great time planning this out, and, and and he's I consider him still a best friend of mine because we still talk after 45 years of life, man, and we've done so many things together, you know. But are but are the, are your best friends are your your armor bearers giving you godly advice? And that's kind of where I'm going. Are they giving you godly advice? Can they pray for you during times when you're just too worn out to pray anymore? I, there was a, a girl in our in our in our congregation, and, and you know, a couple months ago, she said, "Pastor, I can't pray anymore. 
I'm just done. I'm just at my end wicks. I, you need to pray for me. You got to pray for me daily. And at first I was like, man, she's got to pray for herself. And then I was like, no, she's done. She, she needs support. She needs community. And, and me and Tracy prayed for her and kept, kept praying for her. And the church was praying for her, her and this, and this young man. And we just keep praying for her. And, and you know, there was a breakthrough in the last couple weeks, man, in the last month, she's back and the Holy Spirit is filling her and, and guiding her and, and loving on them. And, you know, because people have their back like that can give godly advice. Do you have those types of people? Are they sharing encouraging scripture with you when your heart is overwhelmed, you know? Like I said, it's great to have lifelong friends, but make sure that some of your armor bearers are Christian armor bearers so they can uh, uh, come close to you. And it makes all the difference. You know, consider where, where we get that term, got your back. It's like what I said last week, that we get that term from Ecclesiastes. Uh, if you guys remember, I, I read this last week too. A person standing alone can be attacked and defeated, but when there's two or more, they're standing back to back, they can conquer. Three are even better for a triple branded cord is not easily broken, right? If we try to go through our battles alone, we can be attacked and defeated, man. But together we conquer. Even better, when God is with us, he can't break it. It says a three are even better on one than one. So when we include God into our lives, man, he can, we can't be broken. Do you realize that? You can't be broken. You could be down and out, but you can't be broken. Why? Because God's got your back. This is what happens with Jonathan as an, and his armor bearer. They fight back to get back, and then God brings a miracle to seal the victory. So uh, Jonathan... all. Jonathan's mindset at this point was, do I just need this click, just this armor bearer, or is there more out there? And you know, the beauty of it is that Jonathan wasn't closed-minded. He he didn't he wasn't creating just this click in an armor bearer, but he let himself be open for community. And what do I mean by this? Because God wanted him to have more than just his armor bearer. He wanted him to have a more people in his lives and if you we turn to first samuel chapter 18 this is right before david um fights goliath and a whole army joins in to take on the philistines but in in, in this passage jonathan hasn't met david yet they haven't met david just won the battle everybody's praising david and there's glory and happiness and dancing and fun going on and Saul his father Jonathan's father is praising David for beating you know taking down Goliath and it says it says this in, in, in verse 1 after David had finished talking with Saul he met Jonathan the king's son so he hasn't met him yet now he meets him and there was an immediate bond it says between them for Jonathan loved David from that day on Saul kept David with him and wouldn't let him return home. So as an after, and Jonathan made a solemn pact with David because he loved him as he loved himself. Jonathan sealed the pact by take, taking off his robe and giving it to David together with his tunic, sword, bow, and belt. Man, there was, it says there was an immediate bond. It was a blood bond. Did you ever, when you guys, when you were kids, did you ever say, oh, we're going to have a blood bond, and you cut yourself and you put your hands together? This is the bond they had, an immediate bond they had. In Hebrew, it's like closing the circuit. So think of it like this. You got a flashlight or a bulb, and you put it in and turn it on. You close the circuit. This is what it was. It brought light. It brought hope. It brought friendship. It brought love to each other. It was now complete, this friendship. It wasn't some kind of romantic, weird friendship. These two just had a bond together. And, and you know, they had a deep, deep friendship that they just cared for people, for each other. And these are the type of people that we need in our lives. We need Davids. We need brothers from another mother. We need a sister from another mister. Okay, this is what my, my friend Mike Sopran, I, I think he's watching, um, he's a brother from another mother. 
And and I have many of those now in my life. Some are believers, some are not. But these are people that, you know, they just, they these are people that you can talk to and tell them just about anything, knowing that they there's this bond, this connection. Vince is another one. Will, I mean, they, they Will, there's people in my life now that I just have this connection with. Some are pastors, some are just friends, some are just acquaintances, but these friendships that get built, you know, these are friendships that you can just pick up from never talking for years. You know, it doesn't matter how long you've talked to them or haven't. They could be, like I said, childhood friends or not. We can, but we can call each other and just start up life, doing life together again. And, and, but now as a believer, like I said, I have more believers, uh, at, with friendships. And like I said, a lot of these are from this, from Impact Church. Tracy has a friend like this too, that she just spoke with last night. You know, they can pick up the phone at any time and just start up life together, helping each other, having their backs, this special bond. And that's what a David is. You have a special bond. Um, and, and in your life, this is just, they were just this close. The Bible describes their friendship as he, he, uh, he, 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 he loved him as he loved himself. And, and he, Jonathan loved him, him as, a, as himself. And it's great. I skipped ahead. I'm sorry. It's great to have armor bearers, but we also need best friends. And what, there's a difference. The difference is, uh, David was a friend at all times. It didn't matter what happened. He had he had he had access like a brother to him. They they shared this deep love that was just different for each other. And we can find armor bearers at church, but we have to find David. Those are special. They're needed. Jonathan and David. They, this friendship was tested so many times. Saul's Saul. You you were like Saul goes crazy, right? Holy Spirit leaves him, tries killing David many times. And, but this friendship between Jonathan and David, they done that, it never splits. It actually gets stronger. And um, John, at one point, Jonathan actually picks David over his father. He chose David over his father. And that love for each other just endured through all the troubled times. And they were just able to encourage each other. And that's, and that's the point of the, a, a David in your life. That could be your spouse, a brother, a sister, somebody like that. You know, the point was Jonathan went to find David and encouraged him to stay strong in the faith. To stay strong in the faith. And this is the difference between just a best friend or a David or a Jonathan. See, there's a difference because friends encourage us, but believing friends help us to find strength in God. And that's what Jonathan was doing. He was helping him bring strength in God, give, telling him, keep your faith. You're gonna, he was encouraging him with, with God's word, reminding him. And I'm not telling you to go leave your best friends behind and stuff like that. What I'm trying to tell you is you need those types of people in your life, Davids and armor bearers that can pour into your life God's word and stuff like that. And I, and you know, if your friends aren't believers, and I, my hope is that you're praying for them, that they find, uh, they find God, they find Jesus, they realize what He's done for us, and you know. And that's my prayer for you. And I, I hope that you are praying for your friends that aren't believers. What I'm saying, though, is that we need to find David's as well in our lives. All right. Because David was loyal, loving, cared for Jonathan. He never wanted to come between his father and him. But it happened. And Jonathan trusted him so much and loved him so much that their friendship meant more because David was just a good, good friend. But imagine if Jonathan only created a, a click mindset and wasn't open to a godly tribe. See, what if they met and, and Jonathan became jealous and hateful of what David would become? See, when they met, he gave him his cloak. He gave him, he was giving him a blood. He was giving him a, his blood, basically. He gave over his right to him, saying, man, if you're more than me, I don't care. What if he became jealous and hateful? He would have missed out. He would have missed out on so much, this friendship. And that's my prayer, my hope for you. Let's not miss out on it, right? Be open 
to the tribe God is trying to build for you. Be open to the tribe God is trying to build for you. What do I mean by try God's trying to build a tribe for you? See, God wants us to have these types of relationships in our lives. He wants us to have armor bearers. He wants us to have Davids. He wants us to be open to finding them when they come our way. We can't let past hurts and past relationships come between these great friendships because we're afraid of what might happen. We have to keep that tribal mentality. We have to be open like Jesus was. This was the mindset that Jesus had. He wasn't against, you know, he was against cliques. He was against that, but he was all about tribes. And, and that's, you know, he was all about tribes. And I want to start, I want you to see this, that he built a tribe. It says there were 12 he chose. How many tribes of Israel? 12. Oh, okay. So there were 12, and it's a Simon who he named Peter, James, and, and John, the sons of Zebedee. And, but Jesus nicknamed them the sons of thunder. A, a, a Andrew, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Thomas, James, son of Alphaeus, Thaddeus, Simon, the zealot, Judas uh, Iscariot, who, who later betrays him, right? This is the beauty of it. This gives us insight into Jesus and his mindset, this tribe mindset. It wasn't a cliche, three or more. It wasn't a small group. It wasn't an exclusive group. It was a tribe mindset. He was looking to find followers and to build this friendship. And he was so diverse. This is the beauty of it. He had a tax collector in there who worked for the government. And he had a zealot. A zealot did not like the government. They fought the government. You know, it, it's so different. So many different people in it. Some of these the men in here were old. Some were young. James and John were were thought to be teenagers. And like I said, some were a little older. Jesus, but Jesus wanted them all in his tribe. He even had a non-believer. He had a Judas in his in his tribe, right? Jesus wasn't looking for cliques or clones, but a tribe of, of believers, a tribe of followers, a tribe of Christians. It's, isn't it just great to see how Jesus loved and loves diversity still to this day so we all we, you know we see how how he constructed this jesus tribe jesus's tribe was built on davids and armor bearers let me let me show you the difference right now all right all all the all the all the davids got nicknames all the davids got nickname nicknames look at that he changes simon to peter the sons of Zebedee, uh, the zealot, the right. He he changes. <laughs> All the Davids had nick nicknames. Said that these are his closest friends. And don't think arm the armor bearers. They weren't important. They were. They were very important to him. They helped Jesus. They shared good news around the world about him. They had his back when he needed. They were willing to fight and not run away. But the Davids were different. They went up on the mountain. James, John, and Peter, they went up on the mountain. They saw him transform. They did they, he they went to the garden with them. They 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 were his closest confidence. These were his Davids. And they and and the types of people in Jesus' tribe, they may have been different, but they were all important. They were all important. So now now the, now the thought is well, the twelve tribes, the twelve the 12 disciples, do I only need 12 people in my life? And am I, am I good then? No. Remember, Jesus had a tribe, not a clique. All right? It's, it's much bigger than you think. And in order for you to understand this, I want to take us to 1 Corinthians, what Paul writes. This is after the resurrection. And, it taught, and it's a tribe mindset. It says he was buried and he was raised from the dead on the third day, just as scripture said. And, and he, uh, he was seen by Peter, then by the 12. After that, he was seen by 500 of his followers at one time. Most who are still alive, some died after this. But then it says, then he was seen by James and later by all the apostles. This tr was... Uh, Man, when Jesus comes back, 
Who does he want to see? He wants to see his tribe. He goes and sees Peter. He sees the 12. Then he goes to 500 deep, right? He goes to this tribe of 500 followers. Don't put a limit on how many you let into your tribe. Like, there's no limit at impact, man. If we have five, awesome. If we have 500, awesome. If there's 5,000, awesome. Because it's the more people we have, we can be, build a community. We can build teamwork to go impact communities and the world. Amen? See, you can't put a limit on it. Start small, let like Jesus did. But remember that tribes are open to new members. Impacts open to new members. Your life should be open to new members in it to get close to you. And Jesus, you know, he cared for every David. He cared for every armor bearer. But let's not miss something, all right? It, it says, then he was, he was seen by James. Then he was seen by James. This is important because James was his half-brother. And James wasn't a believer. He wasn't a follower at first. At first. And I love that Jesus comes back to him. And he doesn't give up on his brother. He doesn't give up on him. If you have a friend or a family member that isn't a follower, don't give up on him. Jesus didn't. He kept going. He invites him back. He hangs out with them. See, Jesus can use you to reach those lost ones in your tribe. Remember, they aren't following yet. Remember that. They're not following yet. See, I made it a goal this year to invite friends or uh, close friends and associates, but uh, friends and people on social media when service starts so we can cast a wider net and reach more people, reach more souls, reach more <coughs> um to, to expand our tribe, to cast more necks and, and to find souls and fish. You know, how are you casting your necks? And by doing this, man, this is the coolest thing. I have seen four, five of my friends now start watching what we're doing and, and reaching out to me saying, man, Smith, Anthony, whatever, man, this is perfect timing. See, people are hurting right now. They're looking. They need a tribe. They need armor bearers. They need Davids in their lives. And that can be you. You need to be reaching out. You need to be ca casting your nets. And I, and I challenge you, share this message right now with somebody, man. Let them know that you care, that you want to be a part of their life, okay? You want to be a part of their community. Uh, join us I, I, I live at 5 on Wednesday nights. Share those messages. They're encouraging. They're about James and, and, and what it looks like to, to live a life. Share the messages. Share our, our, our podcast, you know, or, I mean, our YouTube station and Instagram. And maybe maybe you can join the Bible study today. We'll start that about 15 minutes after. I'll throw in the link um, I'll, I'll, in text message, email, and, and in Messenger and stuff like that if you want to join the Bible study. Again, this will start next Sunday at the Go Big Accounting Building after service, okay? It says Wednesday nights at 6, but it will be on Sunday night, Sunday after service. So come join us. Actually, we could do Wednesday night at 6 now. So uh, I didn't even think of that. But <clears throat> anyways, but th th these are ways for us to build our community, okay? To build uh, our tribe up. And I just want to close really fast uh, with us tonight. And, you know... As I close, I just want to take a quick look at how Jesus describes the 500. It's translated in English as followers. But the Greek word is actually brother. That's what he's hes basically, hes he, he, a tribe is a group of friends that becomes family. It's how Jesus saw them. See, God is building great tribes here at Impact. So don't miss what God is building. What God is building in the church, what God is building in you. So, like I said, there are different <clears throat> tribes, but we need to be open to them, okay? We aren't making clicks, but we're encouraging tribes, and all are welcome at Impact, okay? Jesus makes it possible for different people with different backgrounds to come together as a family. Remember, 
There is no longer Jew or Gentile, slave or free, male and female, for we are all one in Christ Jesus. We are all one. May, may God help us get out of this comfort zone and find David, Davids and armor bearers that we need as we help, as we help become David and armor bearers for others. All right, I just want to encourage you as I close today, Jesus wasn't into cliques, okay? And you don't have to come, you don't you don't have to come from a certain background to be a part of this church. You don't have to live a certain way. You don't have to have be uh, some kind of economically uh you know, wealthy status or poor, you come as you are. We tell people that all the time. Come as you are and let the Holy Spirit work on you. All right, we're here to love you. Jesus wants everyone to come to his tribe. And that's our goal, to, to, to have everybody come to the tribe. So if you, are, if you haven't started to follow Jesus, well, today's a great day to do that. He makes it so easy because he gives us his love. All right, he, all we need to do is accept his love. He can, Because he cares for us that deeply, he gives it to us free willing. All right, the Bible says he doesn't treat us as, uh, as our sins deserve. Okay, he doesn't. He washes them away. He loves you just who, the way you are and the who you are. So this is why we confess that we messed up to him. And, and tell him, hey, we don't want us. And we want you to come in our hearts. We want you to be a part of our lives. We want you to, and, and he wants to accept you and he wants to forgive your sins, okay? So all you need to do is to believe that Jesus came in human form, that he died, that he rose again, and he's waiting to start that relationship with you. If that's you today and you want to start that, I want you to pray this prayer with me. That's dear Jesus, I want you to have a relationship with me before I worry about any other relationship. I know I've made mistakes. Please forgive me. Help me turn away from those things to follow you. I want to live for you the rest of my life, getting to know you and your love. I pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hey, guys, I want to thank you for being a part of our uh, tribe and have that mindset to be able to expand and to grow in all aspects of your life. Thank you again for watching. God bless. We love you. And remember, be a blessing. Have a great day. Send me those pics in the Super Bowl. God bless.